But next up, let's see what our corporate companies are working on. So I'd like to introduce our next panel, led by Claire Gleason Landry, Head of Investment and Sustainability at Goodloop, who will take us through some of the great work and initiatives seen in our industry. Don't forget, you can submit your questions at the bottom of the screen using the Q&A box, and we'll try and get through as many of them as we can. Um, if we're not able to get through them all live, we'll try and get back to you after the, after the webinar. But Claire, I will hand over to you. Thanks so much, Lauren. Wonderful, lively discussion going on just before us. We need to crack measurement. We need to focus on collaboration to save time and a really good reminder that good is better than perfect. I have a wonderful panel joining us today. I'll hand you over to, I'll hand each of you over to introduce yourselves, but we're going to be talking about some of the great work and initiatives that our panelists have seen in the industry to ensure we're keeping up to speed with things. We're going to discuss some current examples of different techniques and technologies that are available to market right now. And they're all about focusing on making sure that we're environmentally and socially responsible, as well as being economically viable. Stefan, I'll hand over to you to introduce yourself and then we'll go around. Okay, thank you, Claire. Hi, all. And thanks for having me on this important panel. I'm Stefan, sustainability lead for the Semborn Entertainment Group of Proceedings at Eins, a fully owned company in Germany. And now since you are a couple of years working on the sustainability topics in advertising. Wonderful. Marion? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Marion Gandona. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Invite Plus. We are a French tech company and we help since two years now agencies, advertisers and that tech measuring and reducing their carbon footprints. And we are also part of the IRB Sustainability Committee in Europe, but also in France. So the idea for us today is to explain how we can help, what we've been doing. Yes. <laughs> oh. Matthias? As I'm Chief Media Officer for, for L'Oréal Group, working on very closely with, with Marion on reducing our carbon impact. Wonderful. And Zoe. Thank you very much for having it. It's an honor to be here. My name is Zoe. I am a digital sustainability and web performance engineer at Google. I've been working on the topic for about two years at the moment, release user research with my colleague Luis Barry as well. And my aim here is to make sure that we can offer actionable advice for brands and advertisers and developers. So collaborating with groups related to measurement and standards for this season. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us all today. Quite a few of you mentioned that you've been working on this kind of stuff for the past couple of years. And I think that's really crucial in, in terms of how, where the industry is at the moment. I'm going to come to you, Stefan and Matthias. How aware do you think the digital advertising industry is of its impact on the environment and the levels of carbon emissions that the industry produces? Like, I know that my role has changed radically over the past 18 months and it sounds like yours has too. Mm. Steph? Yeah, thank you. The fact I think we have around about 200 listeners today and have already installed well-frequented IAB Sustainability Standard Committee, as well as the first results uh, such as uh, the, by Andrew mentioned, Radio Sediments Report showed recent great development. So on the one hand side, I think we are all making progress in terms of attention, awareness, and debate in the recent years, way to go, but we're making progress. On the other hand side, I see serious challenges in two areas. Uh, first, the EU Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, among other things, is creating kind of political and financial pressure on many more companies than ever before to submit soon a very detailed sustainability report for the company. While secondly, marketeers, media teams, agencies, and publishers want to improve emission footprints at the product and or budget spending level. That's great. Unfortunately, there are still, there's still an incredible uncertainty at the interfaces of the media industry about how we together can get a more serious grip on these often mentioned emission footprints, particularly on product and advertising level. I think many questions are still relatively groundless in terms of regulations, which is somehow good for us. Arthur mentioned, nevertheless, this leads to different system boundaries and less than moderate 
comparability and some misunderstandings in the evaluation. Absolutely. The need for standardization is so key across all of this. From a L'Oreal perspective, I know certainly in France, like politically, there's so much going on. What have you been doing at L'Oreal over the past couple of years and what's your learning been like, Matthias? First and foremost, I just reiterate, yes, there is there, there is a need for, <laughs> until we crack the question, let's just put it out there, of having a common language and a common methodology across the industry everything's going to be complicated so i'll park it there because that was discussed quite a lot in the previous panel to be concrete what do we do at, at l'oreal i think for one everybody's come to realize that the focus in the past was quite a lot on production and scope one and that today we're realizing when we look at our scope one that it's a very small part of our emissions for l'oreal i'm sure it's the same for every cpg company and other companies and we've come to realize the importance of the impact that advertising specifically and i'm even not even talking about global digital but advertising production and especially broadcasting has within our overall footprint and i think just the fact that we've realized that we've according to some of the math we've done and again because there's no perfect science somewhere between the lines of of maybe four eight percent of of our scope three comes from advertising and so with that comes the great responsibility to try and reduce it what i do see and we'll talk a bit later on the very concrete solutions with marion but I, at least there's been an understanding that needs to happen and so what we've started doing is looking in for one raising awareness so globally but across all our markets finding partners and trying to understand for what make no commitment until we're clear on the formula make no commitment of offsetting because it makes things too easy and the idea is not to offset but to reduce and last but not least and again we'll deep dive into it where at L'Oreal we have a saying saying we're put in peasants but we try to be very concrete in what we do and so while the year while the industry organizes while publishers because a lot of the savings will come from either publishers, either manufacturers, 40% of the footprint comes from the device electrical, electrical consumption. While this happens, there's a lot of things we can do. And so we've been working with Impact Plus on <clears throat> identifying what levers exist today that we can implement really quickly. So that's been that's been focus we've had, waiting for the industry as a whole to organize. I love that. Then make no commitment to offsetting as it's easy. It's very much a sort of burn now, pay later, get out of jail card, which we really need to tackle as an industry. The IOB Europe recently released a state of readiness report, which I'm sure anyone who's tuning in right now has probably seen. And this focus very much on sustainability and digital advertising. And 55% of respondents believed that their company had started or made significant progress on its journey towards CO2 equivalent reduction. Again, with L'Oreal, I know that you've been working with Impact Plus for the past couple of years. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you've been doing together and how under the hood you've been able to go? Marion, yeah. Matthias. Yeah. You want? I was just going to say, I find the 55% quite optimistic. If it's represents started, maybe has made an impact. It's very complicated, but I'll tell, let Marion. Yeah. Take a look we'll have to do it again in a couple of months to see how optimistic yeah. things are. They, they there was a first study, it was, I think it was 2020, last of 2020 or beginning of 2021 in France. It was 63% of all the respondents has not measured yet or has nothing, done nothing yet. So this, we can say that 55% here, okay, there is a positive growth. But yeah, when we, for example, when we analyze campaign, we see that Sure, the first step is evaluation because we need data, we need to have the baseline in order to identify how we can reduce. But there are few, in fact, and this really, I agree with Matthias in that point, there is a few players in the industry right now that are doing a lot for reduction because you need to identify first. So you won't reduce if, and the previous panel were talking about efficiency for us, it's really important. So the idea would be, okay, we want to reduce, sure, but we want to identify again, what are the right strategy for the right media objective on the right partner. With L'Oréal, for example, when we analyze Meta on investment on Meta, if we compare it to TikTok, if we compare it to Snapchat, there is difference. And the idea is to find the proper way to invest the, yes, this amount of money, invest this to get the maximum efficiency 
from a media perspective while consuming less electricity possible and while emitting less GHG emission. So this is a long process because the idea would be, okay, we have this vision for France, but maybe in the US it would work differently because the objective would be different or the audience will differently. So for us, there is two kinds of, Matthias was talking about what can be done today. So we first identify several pillars that can be implemented, for example, tomorrow that can brand can activate really quickly. I think we will talk about this later, but the idea for us is how we can focus on what's important from a media perspective also, and link this efficiency and environmental efficiency in order to address the problem, because we know definitely there is a question of profitability. There is a question of rentability and media is for that. So we, if we want to reduce we need to have both in the same framework, in the same, same analyze that you have concrete action to be taken. Otherwise it would be okay. It would be always a comparison between the two and we need to have a vision where the two are aligned and works the same way. Totally. I guess on that panel, what have you seen across the industry that's inspired you through all of this? Stefan, Zoe, there must be some really awesome things that have been really stoking interest within your organizations. Stefan? Yeah, so I think with the glass and good loop here in the panel, we have two great and ambitious companies, yeah, <laughs> conference. <laughs> we also talked regarding, uh, regarding our business relationships. And I think nevertheless, there are many other technology providers in the market which can provide uh, and great knowledge and are committed to sustainability together all create the more, more important knowledge and transparency. Furthermore, beside the measurement companies and sustainability focused companies or CO2 focused companies, there are the market participants outside of this world and uh, which helps to bring more transparency into the sustainability questions. For example, I talk about Nandini uh, Yami or Claire Atkin, the two remarkable ladies behind the Check My Ads Institute, as well as Dr. Augustine Fu from Fu Analytics, as you know, Claire. And as Annalena mentioned in the first panel, also the low hanging fruits in the first steps for many market participants in, is in avoiding and tackling ad fraud bots and also with made for advertising websites. Why? It doesn't matter whether you assume one or 40% ad fraud, every percent of fraud is pure and absolute waste of energy and emission. Moreover, it's a social challenge that in my opinion should always be kept in mind with an ambitious sustainability strategy. So always ask yourself, where does the money end up? Does it support social separation, rage, criminal activities, or other shady and anti-democratic structures, perhaps? Then you will learn fast. Ecological impact is always connected to social impact and vice versa. So to make it short, companies that recognize and address this kind of whole complex those other companies are inspiring. Great. They're brilliant. Check My Ads is one of my favourite. It's just the ultimate in sort of industry gossip as well. It's Definitely. proper spilling the tea. Zoe, I'd love to hear more about the research that you've been doing at Google. And yeah, over to you. What are, what's been inspiring you? Something that was really inspired for us and thank you for asking is that some advertisers were focusing more as most of the conversations were happening on ad efficiency, right? On connecting to those users that were interested in sustainability and appealing to them. And something that we saw after running some user research, which is a counterpart in a way to IAB's research, is we were focusing on user perception rather than their readiness. We saw that I'm connected to what Matthias was mentioning before, but being very specific with what you're doing. Users want clear, honest, and transparent messaging. And for example, 78% of participants were skeptical about any sustainable claims. And at the same time, about 87% of them said that they would be interested in seeing how brands are doing these digital sustainability claims and what it means with that, right? So I think that it's important for us to try and understand beyond running a clean IT infrastructure, how can we educate users into what this means, right? And it's one of the main things that prompted us to say, how can we help developers achieve this? How can we help advertisers achieve this? 
how can we connect to users on post-click and make sure that also the ads are as efficient as they can be. Such an interesting point. Are we in danger of alienating ourselves from consumers because they've had years of people, of brands claiming to be planet friendly, carbon, what's it all mean? And certainly new directives are coming out all the time. In the UK, we've got the ASA and big fines coming for companies that do anything in the realms of greenwashing. I think it's so true. Like ultimately who's the end user and experience person who's experiencing advertising it's consumers and we have to really work hard as brands and as organizations to make sure that we're being as transparent and as truthful as possible um i want to consumers, i'm not sure consumers are very conscious of some of the findings we've had looking at our, our impact on yeah, no, it's all very much. Message and all that, they get it. But for example, I think there's a lack of education and then something we'll probably present in one of the, the events we do this year, but explaining that if you consume through Wi-Fi, your Netflix rather than your 5G when you're at home, you're spending less, you're having a lesser impact. Explaining that if you move into dark mode or for us as creatives, one of the big learnings we've had working with Afak Tepris was if we while Google and Meta and everybody compress this file, you can, you can go a step further and see significant results in, in optimizing your footprint. And that's also true for consumers, I think, in the light they put on their phones and so on. So on the user perspective or an advertiser perspective, there's already some super concrete steps that can be done, not at a creative level or a messaging or a behavior, but at a behavioral media consumption level. Wow. Uh, it can be interesting. You've got me feeling very guilty about my inbox and how many yeah, unread yeah. emails I have yeah, in it that I need to, of files, to get rid of. <laughs> Let's talk practical steps and technology that's available to us. Um, what are the what's the low hanging fruit right now that people can and brands and agencies can act on, and how can they engage with the technology that's currently available? I guess this is open to you all, but we've touched upon sustainable production. Stefan, I know you you have a lot to say on this, and Marion as well. I'd love to hear what you've all seen and what you've been doing. Yes, Matthias was talking about how we can optimize the creative. Basically, when we suggest reduction strategy to our clients, we focus on what can be achievable. So we can have different scenarios. We can have achievable, ambitious, or average, ambitious. And then we can suggest different strategies. Different where we're also who we are talking to, if it's advertiser that can have a direct, we can say, control of the creative they will send to the publisher or to the different technologies. And then they will have all the discussions on the technology and all the publisher sites. So it will be different. But if we focus on from the advertiser point of view and how we can, how we helped L'Oréal, we have creative, definitely. We've been working also on some, on some brand list survey to validate that optimize creative as the same brand perception. So because it's the same quality perceived by the end user, basically, it's not a pixelized creative, not at all. And the result is really encouraging. So same CPV, same cost per view, same completion rate, positive brand lift, but four euro uh, per euro invested, way less GHG emission, above minus 40%. So what does it mean? It means like only with creative, we have an average of minus 30%. And if we had on top, Wi-Fi, for example, of if we add on top the identification of placement, format that will perform better. And then if we have also an optimization on carbon intensity, we can have, we can have for example, in minimum minus 50%. So really encouraging. And then we will have on top the analysis of the supply path and this, all the domain that was talking about the previous panel. So it's really encouraging, but the idea is where we need to start, what's really achievable, because for advertiser, what is really important, it's to have a kind of reduction measures that, that can be in control, they can be in control also, and then to rely on their partner, rely on their ad tech partner to do the rest. But I think everyone is involved in the process. And for us, what is also really important, it's to monitor all that. I think, and Arthur from IAB France were talking about framework. Basically, it's really important, but it's also really important to have common baseline to common framework to analyze, but also benchmark to refer to, because it's really hard to compare yourself or the journey you've been in if you don't have 
unitary indicators and benchmarks. So compares an efficiency based on total GHG volume, it's really hard. So we've built some indicators for clients to compare their efficiency from a campaign, from a partner, from a placement, to link it with their media objective, but also to, yeah, to well identify what's the reduction they've been doing from a year to another in order to really monitor all that. Because the idea, yes, for me is reduction, but how you can pilot this reduction. Yeah. Well, then, well, yeah, we're, we're coming well, towards the end. So Stefan, I'd love it if you could wrap up in terms of... Ah, okay. Now, if we have to go to the end, just one sentence regarding the, what we can do or have to do from the publisher perspective or mm -hmm. from outside the publisher perspective, you can address the publishers to make things more transparent. For example, we provide the market now with TV and digital CO2 emission factors on offers or regularly on invoices, and invoices in the future as well. There's a lot of work before you come to this point to do. And I think that's also the thing we've heard in the first panel and now heard also from Marion and Pia. So we need to get more transparency and standardizations in the market. I, I see the most essential next steps as I understand all of you. We need comparable figures in comprehensible and transparent system boundaries. This is also the reason why I'm involved in the, the Europe Sustainability Standards Committee as thankfully the newly appointed vice chair and that we will have to discuss these pain points somehow. And I'm looking forward probably to welcome more in the committee after our discussion today. Absolutely. We're at time. Sorry that it's slightly shorter. Obviously, the previous panel overran ever so slightly because they got very deep into their debate. I think there are some wonderful learnings from all of this. Achievable versus ambitious is such a brilliant way of segmenting things. And it ties in again into that be good rather than perfect for the, in the short term, right? We have to start making these steps and they have to be achievable and they have to be quantifiable. And then also the need for standardization, having comparable figures and being really interrogative of everything, whether it's your creatives, optimizing to broadband and Wi-Fi, publish, focusing on your publishers and your supply, avoiding Frankenstacks, as I know that's Stefan, we had that conversation in one of our one of our warm-ups of tech stacks absolutely everywhere. Being doing really hard, quite labor-intensive work is gonna have a huge impact overall. And hopefully when the next state of readiness, or will it even be readiness, when the next survey comes out, we can start to see some really some big shifts in the results. But Thank you, everyone. We might have a couple of time for a couple of questions. Helen, let me know. But yeah, that's us. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Claire. Wonderful job moderating. And a big thank you to Matthias, Stefan, Marion and Zoe and Frankenstacks. I think that may be my new favourite word. <laughs> it's brilliant. We're definitely going to have to come get you all back. I think before the end of the year, we really need to have this conversation again and just see the progress. It's the speed of which things are developing is so encouraging. So we look forward to welcoming you all back very soon.